Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he is the King of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if we will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me?
що простилися й обо всякому прогрішенню, вольному і невольному. Всяке прогрішення вчинене ними словом або ділом, або помислом, як благий, і чоловіку робить Бог простий, бо немає чоловіка, що жив би і надрішив. Ти був один без ріка, правда твоя, правда в увіки, і слово твоє істина, бо ти єси воскресення, і життя, і покой, усопшого раба твого новопереставленого. Проте Єрея Романа, Христе Боже наш, і тобі славу посилаємо з беззначальним Твоїм Отцем і Пресвятим і Благим, і животворящим Твоїм Духом нині і повсякчас, і на віки віки.
to the Lord. We also pray for the repose of the soul of the servant of God, the archpriest Roman, who has newly fallen asleep, and for his forgiveness of his offenses, voluntary and involuntary. That the Lord God will place his soul where all the just repose. Let us ask of Christ, the immortal King and our God, for the mercy of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the revealed forgiveness of his sin.
According to Saint John. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear him 
will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. who slay and make to live, who cast into hell and again raise up, you who in wisdom have created man and returned him to the earth again, exacting a spiritual debt, we beseech you receive the soul of your servant and grant him rest in the bosom of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and give him the crown of your righteousness, the portion of the saved, in the glory of your elect. And for those things which in this world he accomplished for your name's sake, may he receive a reward in the mansions of the saints. Through the grace and bounties and love toward mankind of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with him in the Holy Spirit, you are blessed now and ever and for ages of ages. Oh, 
up your cave in the sixth stone. Blessed is he whom you have chosen and taken, O Lord.
but said to the Judeans that came to him, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Judeans sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does and he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent you. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. resurrection to life eternal. And as you appointed him to be a minister of your church on earth, so also make him the same at your heavenly altar. O Lord, as you have adorned him with the spiritual honor among men, so also receive him, him uncondemned into the glory of the angels. You yourself have glorified his life upon the earth. In the same way, make glorious his departure from this life and his entrance among your saints and number his soul with all those who from all the ages have been well pleasing in your sight. For you are the resurrection and the life and the repose of your servant, <coughs> the newly departed archpriest Roman who has fallen asleep. O Christ our God, and to you do we ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever and ever.
according to St. John the Evangelist. the Judeans that came to him. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you that you have seen me, you that have seen me, and yet you don't, do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out, for I have come down from heaven, not to, to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. Let us pray to the Lord. unto life eternal, for you are the resurrection and the life and the repose of your servant, the Archpriest Roman, O Messiah God, and to you do we ascribe glory together with your Father, who is from everlasting, and your all holy, good, and life giving spirit, both now and ever and for ages of ages. Amen.
resurrection from the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now, when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Wisdom, let us be St. John, the theologian. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. The Judeans then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day.
after breathing into it a soul with his life-bearing breath, he laid upon it a holy command. Therefore you have called me, who am subject to the corruption of sin, O lover of mankind, because of your boundless compassion. But grant rest with your saints, O God, to him whom you have called. Oh, unto man, but grant rest with your saints, O God, to him whom you have taken. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and after every yard of the Lord against you must they make cause of
comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. 
The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So this is the prayer after Holy Communion that so many of us always say. I thank you, Lord, my God, that you did not reject me, a sinner, but deemed me worthy to be a partaker of your holy mysteries. Clearly, these mysteries are the precious and true body and blood of Jesus Christ. At the same time, it's all of us as the mystical body of Christ. And in all of our relationships, we partake in this mystery. I thank you that despite my unworthiness, says Father Roman, you made me worthy to receive your most pure and heavenly gifts. And we say that with O oh, Master and lover of mankind, you died and rose for our sake and favored us with these 
your awesome and life-giving mysteries. And these mysteries, again, not limited to, they're certainly based on the true body and blood of Jesus Christ, but these mysteries are every single relationship he had in his life. With his parents, his extended family, his brothers and sisters. This mystery is the relationship that he had with you as his spouse. The relationship that he had with you as a child of his. This is the mystery that he gives thanks for today. The benefit and sanctification of our souls and bodies. He counted on your relationship as a friend, the times that you didn't get along, for his sanctification of his soul and body. These mysteries, grant that they may be for the healing of my soul and body. This relationship that I find myself in, he would say as pastor of this parish, as a priest in the eparchy. Every one of us contributed to the healing of his soul and body, day after day. And we routed adversaries. He counted on you with your specific relationship with him to be the enlightenment of his eyes, of his heart. The Holy Spirit chose you to enlighten the eyes of his heart in what you said, how you said it to him, in what you failed to do. Today we ask for forgiveness for him, and we ask for forgiveness for ourselves, for the times that we did not see all of us as a community, one in the body of Christ, that we looked away from that truth, and in any way thought or acted or said something selfish. And he underlines that for us this evening. Because he sees the body of Christ like he's never seen it before. All of us, through the grace of the Holy Spirit, are the peace of each other's spiritual power. It is the Holy Spirit through you that give another person an undaunted faith, an unfeigned love, wisdom. The Holy Spirit mystically uses you, each one of us, to help the other in the body of Christ keep the command. We help each other grow in divine grace. It is belonging to our families, to our relationships, to one another, that we belong to the kingdom, when we belong to the body of Christ. And in order that, preserved by all of these relationships, this relationship with God, the Trinity, the Mother of God, the Saints, and each one of us here collected to remember Him, those who are not here, all the angels and saints, the heavenly powers, the relationship that you say your first name have with the entire body of Christ preserves you in your holy. So that, as the prayer says, I may always remember God's grace and no longer live for myself.
Father Roman wants us to remember this. But to live for you, our master and benefactor. That's what life is all about. To live for God. We heard in the last epistle to the Romans. Whether we're alive or whether we're deceased, we are the Lord's. Thus, when I depart from this life, which has come to pass, in the hope of life eternal, may I attain that everlasting rest for the sound of those celebrating never ceasing. What does he want to tell me here tonight? In the familiar voice that you heard all the years that you knew him. What is he saying to you tonight about the sound of celebration that never ceases? And no end to the delight of those who behold the ineffable beauty of his face. What is Father Roman telling you now about this beatific vision? Beholding this transformed man and God, transfigured as we celebrate it today. How are each of us a glimpse? A faint light of that very same face that he sees now and he can see so clearly in each of your faces. Brother Ramon looks at you and he sees Christ. He sees the Trinity clearly like never before. And he speaks to you with that intensity at this time. If only you knew. Don't lose faith. Why? Because now, like never before, he can truly say, You are the true object of desire. And the indescribable gladness of those who love you. O Christ our God. All of creation sings your praises. That's why we are here tonight. To join with all of creation. To join in that creation that sings the praise of God. The angels who are mystified and how each of you are a part of the body of Christ. As we continue to pray, Tonight, tomorrow, let the words of this prayer give us cause and time to reflect with Father Roman. Have that conversation with him in prayer. Tell me, Father Roman, what do you see? What do you know now about the body of Christ? What lies in wait for us? What are the promises he's made us? That so abundantly clearly now you see that we struggle with. We ask for forgiveness for the times that we lose sight of this promise and in our weakness can't understand what it means. And we ask how the Roman to intercede to for us as a friend, as a husband, as a brother, as a uncle, as a grandfather, <coughs> in any relationship that he had with anyone of us. We pray for him and we ask him to pray for us to the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.
Святый Боже, святый крепкий, святый бесмертный
progresenio voi no voi ne voi no
during one year. I ask that you keep your conversations to the outdoors, and inside we listen to the Holy Gospel with reverent silence. God keep you until the morning. Glory to God for all things. Christ is among us. He is he is among us. The Gospel according to Luke. Inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, because you do not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. So it was, as soon as the days of his service were completed, that he departed to his own house. Now after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked upon me to take away my reproach among people. Now in the sixth month the angel, of, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, to the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And in his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is how the sixth, and this is now the sixth month for her, who is called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. 
Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly estate of his handmaid. For behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly, and he has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. Now Elizabeth full time came. Now Elizabeth full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father Zacharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. But they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to his father what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and, and wrote, saying, this, His name is John. So they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, praising God. Then fear came on all who dwelt around them, and all these things, these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has revisited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have, been, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the ways of peace. So the child grew and became strong in faith and was in the desert till the day of his manifestation to Israel. And it came to pass in those days that a, decree, a, de a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governor in Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth, forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Be not afraid, 
For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and he will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. So it was when the angel had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child and all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now, when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were complete, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law,